Well, hello, welcome to Drawing with Fire. I am Valerie, your neighborhood biography artist, here to help guide you on your burning adventures. And I'm joined with Hubby, okay. <laughs> Jason, to help uh, read the questions to me in life. And we are going to be working on the box and working on trying to get the fabric texture. There is quite a bit of pattern in the box. So we are just going to kind of give the illusion of, of how this box looks versus really trying to get every single little detail in there. I hope everybody can hear us. How's everybody doing? Hi Eve, hi Paul. All right, I've already been heating up my tip because I'm using, I'm gonna start off with the um, razor tip what they call a transfer tool uh, tip. This is the small version, but it's good for shading. So I went ahead and heated that up first because it takes a minute and it's still not where I want it to be. I have to. I was on a three, I'm gonna have to bump it up to five. Michael Ann's in. Hi Michael Ann. This tip does take um, a lot more time to heat up. So I just do it this way. Grace is here. Hi, Grace. See, this is at a five and it's still needing some more heat. But you know what? I think we're going to go ahead and get started because I don't want my base burning to be too hot. Um, based on the black and white, I can shade it all one tone and then go back in and add the darks and then I'm going to probably use some white uh, color pencil to get the high highlights. And again, the pencil's too dark so let's see how much we can lighten it up. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, may have to do a little sanding to cut this back some because it's not moving. What do you mean? The pencil mark, <coughs> uh, the graphite's not lightening up huh? as it should. But since we do have more dark in this box than we did the feather, I think we're going to be okay. We're going to start off with the line. And I can use just the tip, pointed part, or I can go completely flat because this is a good tip that does make full contact um, with the wood. So we'll get started. For whatever reason, this particular pen is buzzing. Hmm. I don't know. Was it buzzing before? I don't remember it ever buzzing, but I may have just been paying less attention to that. I'm just trying to work. How's the video and audio working out for everyone? Looks good here. Oh god. Do I need to zoom in? Mm. Maybe a little bit. Grace has had a cold. Oh, I'm sorry, Grace. Says this is a nice distraction. Well, I hope this helps. And see, I can also use the edge, just the edge of the tip, to get into this area as well. I was trying to shade the darkness, but actually I just want to get the base in there. I did want to mention tonight, Sheldine from, um, I'll pop this up for you, from Sheldine Fine Art will be working on the second part of our collaboration live, and I'll be in chat. It is a bear cub, and there's an iCard for her channel, as well as the link down in the description. She's working with colored pencil, and as I've said before, colored pencil and graphite, uh, those who work with it, trans transfers over very well to wood burning. Mm -hmm. A lot of the same techniques, and the, <laughs> the need for patience 
since they do take longer. That's true. And so they there will be two videos, one for me and one from Sheldine, hopefully within the week, and working hard to get it done, um, of a cute little bear cub. I took a photo of it. Um, Arizona. So, if you guys want to join us tonight, make sure you uh, subscribe to Sheldine's channel and come hang out with us. It's five. It's eight. P her live is uh, eight p.m. Eastern uh, Standard Time tonight. So, uh, links down in the description. <coughs> Take that off the screen now, just so it's not so in the. Uh, Sheldon will be on Michael Ann for your time. It'll be uh, 5 p.m. She went on a little early last night because she uh, worked on her background for her part, or her version, I should say, because uh, our backgrounds are different, but the bear, uh, bear cub's the same. And tonight she's working on the bear cub. And Sheldon, she's just such a wonderful artist and sweet person. And extremely glad to be doing a collaboration with her. My first. Yay. So this is, I probably should have used the bigger tip to cover more area at one time, but I'll just move quicker. Like, like a torch, maybe? <laughs> no, no, no T word. Aww. You'll get you'll get evil, worked up and wanting to see fire. Well, she's not right here right now, so. Oh. Yeah. Well, she'll be right back. Oh, then it was safe. Unless everybody else tells her in chat. I'm sure they will. <laughs> so right now I'm just trying to get the base tone of the box. Can you guys hear the pen uh, making noise? I can hear it. Oh, I'm hoping the mic's not picking it up. Hmm. I may have to contact Razor Tip on this because... When the pen makes noise like this, it tends to mean that there's a short somewhere. Mm. And I haven't noticed it until now. Maybe because it's quieter and I don't have music playing. Mm. Let me see. Oh. That. So just the base tone, this area will be darker. I don't have the oof, pattern of the box on here because I am going to uh, kind of freehand, well, I freehand most of it, but if it's not perfect, it's okay. So I'm not going to stress over that. And it means it's less graphic for me to erase. Yeah. Yeah, this is making a lot of noise and it's doing the squeaky chalkboard thing. Do you think it's the weather? Um, no, I think it's just the tip. But I, as for the, the pen making, the buzzing noise, from what I understand, that is due to some kind of short or something not working right. So, we'll have to check the connections when you get done. Yeah. Well, it, my pen is plugged in all the way. And this is a five granite. For thicker tips, it takes a higher setting. But I would have thought this would have been a little darker. Hmm. So, I do have it's not the heavy duty cord on. In fact, let me switch it over to the heavy duty cord. And let's see if we have a difference in how it's working. 
Hmm. Well, Paul can hear it. He said it's not annoying. Eve says that she's eager to see how the texture of the box will translate. Uh, me too. <laughs> and Michael I needs peanut butter. Oh. And should be right back. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious to see how this translate translates also. Because in the end, I may end up changing how it comes across. Um, because you can see the thread. I can make the picture bigger while we're waiting for this to um, heat up. You can see the thread work in it. And that would mean putting in a lot of small lines that I don't know that I really want to do. Hmm. Um, so you could easily change the uh, texture of this box and it wouldn't take away from it, I don't think. Hmm. You put whatever texture you want on it. Yeah, you could. You can, that's, that's where artistic licensing comes in. If you're not sure how to do something, Change it up a little bit. Alright, let's see if this is heated up. Oh, wow. Okay, maybe. It was the cord. Because now, that's still making buzzing. <coughs> you okay? Excuse me. Look how I actually bumped it down to four. So it actually might be the cord that is my issue. And Grace says someone's using the leaf blower outside her window, so she doesn't think she'd hear the noise. Oh. <laughs> so now I'm out of four, mm -hmm. and I'm still getting the same color. Oh, I hate that. That's like nails on a chop cord. I hear the buzzing, though. How about that? <laughs> Trying not Sounds to like do... you have mice. Yeah, I'm trying not to do that. Because if it's annoying me, it will understandably annoy many, many others. So this part of the box is darker than the egg, and we will go back and darken it. Right now, we're just trying to get an even base color. And trying not to burn over the pencil line so that it's not permanently in there. So when I move the pen up and down, it doesn't make the squeaky mar noise. Um, yeah, trying to hear the squeak. When I go sideways, that's when it does it. I'm not sure. The wood's really dry, so it could be just how the tip is contacting with the wood, which mm, I can't help that. So, hmm. Paul's into archery. Cool. I did not know that. I think I'm getting some stuff last week or two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I still have some graphite from the feather left over, trying to be careful. The lighter graphite I can hide, but let's see here. This is a shadow right here. This is a shadow here. Uh, so hopefully it'll be okay. I'm not sure. Oh. Box is darker than the feather, so hopefully that'll make the feather pop out more. And because I'm using the very end of the tip, I'm getting a darker burn. Mm -hmm. Right here. Yeah, for right here it's okay. I'm not going to stress about it. You can still see the pencil line in here if I stay on the screen. Um, just using the tip darkens it. Mm. Now we're gonna go back down. Ah, sorry. Let's see what happens if I go in circles. It's also going to be lighter in areas because of how the grain is. 
some of the grain will burn darker than the other parts. Yeah. Up and down, up and down. No squeaky there. Trying to keep my hand relaxed so it doesn't cramp up as much, which is something I have to continually work on. I have that problem too. It's like sometimes, especially if I'm really focused, I realize that if I'm, especially if I'm working over large areas, like with graphite, that I realize that I, my hand actually hurts. Yeah, I just have a tight grip. All right, we're going to try to take off some of the graphite with sanding because this back is going to actually be lighter than the box. Mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of gouged it there, it looks like. Try to make it small. It feels like 400. But... That one didn't go anywhere. <coughs> so, let's bump it down to 320 and see if that works better. Mm. I'm trying to be careful and not get into the well, the ink bottle. Let's see how much we got off. I do see that it's being rough on the wood right there. Hmm. This wood is just not wanting to work with me. It's still upset that I'm burning it. Hmm. Because that shouldn't have happened. That's weird. That actually looks lighter. It does. When you sand the wood, it's light. And then when it's been sitting, even for a couple of days, the wood kind of oxidizes and gets darker. I did not know that. Yeah. Huh. Um, so you could maybe use that to your benefit if you're trying to do like subtle atmospheric effects. Um, I tried with your portrait. Yeah. And thinking the same thing that if I waited and, and sanded the areas right before I was going to seal so they'd be lighter but it didn't quite work out that way oh, what happened? it just all evened out oh, okay yeah, I know, because I thought the same thing that I could use it to my advantage <coughs> yeah, this does not want to work with me I'm back up to 400. Mm. Are we missing Andrew today? I haven't seen him so far. Mm. Hope he's feeling okay. Alright. I'm not going to worry about where I've already burned. I can put it back. I just want to make sure. I'm trying to go with the wood grain. And since it's an oval, that's a little harder to do. Mm. Oh, I see what you mean, because the grain's circular? Yep. Ah. And so I'm trying to go with it. Do you think that's why that there's issues? Uh, I guess that could be possible. Because you're coming across all the, the rings? Use the eraser to pull out. The eraser works really well to pull out any of the sanding debris from the grain. And I think this is about as light as I'm going to get it. I don't want to spend the whole life trying to. and getting a hand cramp. <laughs> trying to. I, I will use the. For this type of, uh, this brand of wood, I will definitely use a lighter graphite paper in the future. Mm. Okay. I'm 
And next week, I will be finished with all of the base burning, and it'll just be a matter of putting in the shadow for the background and details and highlights. That's cool. And it's done. All right, let it be. Yeah, I can smell the wood that I've sanded, but it's just not wanting to. Mm. That's as light as I'm going to get it without really gouging anything. There's a crack right there. That's all right. So, all right. this is like beginner level. So, it's just basic. And mm -hmm. so, you're just keeping to like the wood burning tools. But if you were doing this as not a beginner, would you? Would you be using the torch for like some of these wider areas? No, I wouldn't. Mm. Because I'm not doing a dark background on it. And I think that the torch is good for the dark background. I mean, I could do a lighter background around the still life itself. Mm. And then do a, the kind of a okay effect, or how do you pronounce that? with the torch along the edges to kind mm. of just um, frame it a okay. little bit more. But on this wood, I wouldn't do that only because I don't want to lose some of the pretty texture that the natural wood itself has. Oh, okay. Um, and so for the lid where it comes down, I'm trying to... Meg's here. Hi, Meg. I'm trying to kind of curve it along the edge a little bit so that it looks like the box, of course, is changing ang angles. And the closer we get to the left, it's going to be a little more straight on because of the perspective. And further right, we can curve it a little bit more. Luckily, this is a shadow, so I can darken that line. Mm. I'm not going to worry about it. Figure out where the edge is. But over here on the right, because it goes off, the perspective is different. So curving it a little bit makes it feel more like the angle is changing. Going straight up and down, because that's how the fabric would be. So Meg says, I finally did it. I broke my crappy Hobby Lobby burner accidentally. <laughs> she didn't say air quotes accidentally. <laughs> Time for a new Accidentally. One. <laughs> but anyway, and she got a razor tip, the only one her local woodcraft store carries. And uh, she says she likes it, all caps, so much better. Awesome. All the professional burners are good. Um, I'm using the razor tip right now. I will say, just my personal opinion, everybody's different. Um, with the tips I use and how I burn, the uh, razor is not my go-to burner. But it is still a good brand. And if that's all you can get, and you're happy with it, burn away. I'm just happy people are burning. I think this is just my opinion, but I, I think um, like when you start into your chosen media, like the one that really speaks to you, I think that a lot of times the the brand that you start with is one that you become attached to in some way because you're used to it. That's yeah. true, and that's how it was with me with the Nibs burner. Yeah, and due to experience and situation and. What is currently going on with them? Nibs Runner is no longer my favorite. Mm. I do like their setup the most, but it is not my go-to burner anymore. Yeah. I wonder if that'll ever happen to me with Aztec. Well, you've been using your Airbrush brand for over 20 years. I know. And you have my Awada to use, but you're not interested. 
Well, it's just that the way that the Iwata is set up, it's more traditional, so in order to clean it, you have to disassemble it. Oh, that you do. But maybe there's different tips that you might like better with that one. Mm, maybe. Maybe they do all that stuff. So, just trying to get that even burn, that line, this line right here. Uh, where the lid and box come together will definitely be hidden. In the photo, it was hard to see the detail of the metal for the clasp. So I'm going to fudge that a bit. Mm. Because I can. Well, my clasp is broken anyway. Is it? Mm -hmm. It's your box. I know. I got that box um, the same Christmas that I smashed my hand. Oh. And um, the uh, my boss, he had a um, he had a uh, Christmas party where it was um, like a Christmas exchange game where you like mm -hmm. yeah where you can get it was the first time I'd ever played it I was really confused. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, I don't remember what I got, but somebody else got those those um, balls. They don't know what's in the box, love. <laughs> yeah, it's two silver balls. And... <laughs> okay, explain, please. Well. Because you give me a hard time about how burning sounds. Imagine how that sounds. Right. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> they're used uh, for therapy, or they can be used for therapy, and um, for, like, hand dexterity. And, and so they... Um, so I traded with somebody who had these things uh, and it actually really helped me. I used them quite a bit to help get my um, hand dexterity back. So I've They had... don't know what happened to your hand either. Huh? They don't know what happened to your hand either. Oh. Yeah. It was smashed. There's a reason why if you look on our Facebook, Heavenly Legends Art Facebook, that um, Jason's uh, logo is uh, three claws. You might want to explain that now that I said it. Ha ha. Oh, okay. Um, all right. So I um, I was I was working. I made a really poor choice. Um, oddly enough, after the military, <laughs> I came out of the military at that time fully intact. The first time. Well, some some breaks and and stuff, but generally speaking, mostly intact. You know. Okay, but let's say this is your first enlistment. Right. That you're talking about. But, um, but anyway, so I um, decided that I was not going to use a piece of equipment to haul this transmission core. So I just threw it up on my shoulder. Well, it's in the middle of the winter in Alaska, and I accidentally got off the path that we had that was uh, had um, like gravel and stuff so that you wouldn't slip. And I slipped and fell. And... Um, Short story is mm. is that transmission came down and came across uh, three fingers on my drawing hand, like as I'm left-handed, and, and crushed it. Crushed it. Yeah, just shattered it. Like, like if you're like crushing ice in a towel, you know, with a hammer. That's kind of what happened. Anyway, so I was lucky to have a ski glove on, and um, so otherwise I think it would just, just severed them. But um, so I got reconstructive surgery, and um, I was hardly able to move them. And my doctor told me that I ought to think about not being left-handed anymore. But I'm too stubborn. You? Yeah. I anyway, I don't, don't say. I don't know. I don't know. I'm also stubborn <laughs> like that. Valerie. You're not talking about me now, are you? Huh? Oh no, Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, so I started trying to draw again with my left hand because therapy started almost immediately and um, I was terrible at it and I had some good friends and they were they would tease me about it and they'd be like oh look the claw the claw's trying to draw <laughs> anyway Aww. well they they, they were very you tell me about that <laughs> they're very kind but you know friends don't give you a break this is true you know so they, even when you have a break even when you have multiple breaks I so um up to that point in time, I had been painting under my name, and I decided 
that I would start painting under the name Three Claw and just sign it with three claws because that represented my three fingers that got crushed and that they're mangled and um, anyway and so that kind of represented my my um, triumph over crushing adversity <laughs> okay just for a second sure. right here now I've got a base of the burning of course this is gonna get a lot darker but right here in my reference photo starts the texture oh. and so now we're gonna have to figure out how to fudge this so it looks as close to our reference photo without giving me a headache hmm. okay. so I bumped up my heat to five the pen does warm up um, more so than the other ones but I'm used to some of this heat, so it doesn't bother me. So we're gonna go up. Right now, I'm just lightly placing where I want some of the pattern. I can go back and detail it and whatnot, but right now, we are just trying to get it in place. That is one of the reasons why wood burning takes me so long, is I do so many layers. We got lines going here. I also need to keep the perspective of the box itself in mind. But right now I'm just kind of putting holding spots. I can alter fix where I'm off. If I do it lightly, I have that wiggle room to fix things. So right here we have some lifted fabric because there's highlight in between and that's where I will probably put uh, the white color pencil and I'll be using uh, Pris Prismacolor white because it is the um, most opaque white mm -hmm. of the colored pencils. And it does well on wood. So that's the one I'll be using. And I know this is not going to be perfect. And I also don't want it too highly detailed because then the only the box will stand out the most and take away from the whole composition that we've worked on. I think each subject in the picture is just as important. So I don't want one piece to over shadow everything else. So we've got that line there, that line there, this one comes up to the edge here, which I know is still, I, I know where the edge is because my pencil line's still there, mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna, not gonna freak. And then this comes down. Paul says, Jason, after 20 years, it's time to try something new. <laughs> what is that about? Mm. Oh, is that about the airbrush, Paul? Yeah, I think oh. so. Or about being right-handed. Because I tried that. Actually, I can I can actually draw with my right hand, surprisingly. Actually, I think everybody can. It's like when you write your name on a... The... I can draw with my right hand because I'm right-handed. Right. That's what you said. I think you can draw with your <laughs> off hand. There you go. It just takes a little mental switching. I tried that in portrait class and surprisingly it adapted really quickly. It's not something I choose to do, but it was interesting that I could do it. Huh. It's just, it's like when you draw your name, like if, if you draw, uh, I feel like you write your name, right? On a, And right-handed people can do this. Left-handed people have a harder time because that works out differently but if you write your name like in cursive and you have a pen in each hand and you like if you're right-handed you start in the center and you're writing your name with your right hand if you copy the movements with your left hand you'll find that you've written your name exactly the same huh. backwards backwards yeah so your the connections are there to do it
who's hmm. disagreeing with me. I don't know why. I'm sure she'll tell you. <laughs> Specify. She'll tell you. Give her a chance. Oh, I can't write my name. She says, I can't write my name with my offhand. Let's see. I'm a little off on where this is connecting here, but that's okay. Again, we're kind of just... I think... I think Eve could write her name with her offhand. I believe in you, Eve. <laughs> I know you have the power inside you. Oh, Michael and this what happened. Got crushed. Got crushed real bad. But that was um that was nineteen ninety five. Yeah. Four. Three or four. Four. Nineteen ninety four, I think. So just trying to get some of the bigger. Pieces in here. The fabric part really is going to come with the highlights because they are so prominent in this one. Let's see where that curve. And this is a bit of an oriental fabric, right? It is. It's Chinese. I had pictures of the the box open with the um, silver balls showing. That sounds so bad. Um. <laughs> Grace says, I was one in 1994. Oh, God. No! Well, Cole, our youngest son, was born in 94. Oh, that's true. I'm so old. Yes, you are. <laughs> You know, stay awake. Make sure I'm on screen. <clears throat> Let's see here. We'll kind of put the... Oh, yeah. Chat's feeling old, too. Well, at least I'm not alone. Okay. I am going to use my straight edge because I know this is not perfectly straight. No, Grace. It's not your job to make people feel old. Let's see here. I think we're going to put the line... That here. Hmm. Kind of straighten it out a little bit. Because it is off, but the in the photo it's not off. Hmm. So I'm going to try with this tip. Now, what this do you do tip with the may glass? not be, be the best tip to do. You're this. using the the glass as a straight edge. Yeah. Actually this tip is not the best choice for it. Oh, um I started working on the ceramic masks for you. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, what I had done, I had to throw away, uh, so I'm going to have to redo it because somebody was kind kind enough to uncover my, my drying pottery, and so it was past the point where I could do anything with it. Mm. So, thankfully, I had the rest of it assembled, otherwise it literally screwed me over, but it's easy enough to redo. This tip is probably not my best choice, but... Why? There, because I I'm not getting a very. Um, it's a straight line, but I'm not getting a whole lot of uh, contact with the tip. I would think like a ball tip would be best to do a straight it, line because yeah. it's a ball. Well, the ball tip. You don't or, have to worry about angles. The ball tip or one of the straight line skews. Um, the Optima skew um, is what I used on the book, but it actually kind of cut into the wood. That's why I'm stick staying away from that one right this second. Michael Ann's gonna try drawing with her left hand today. Cool. Should be interesting. Just at first your brain's not gonna want to do it. So if you really want to do it, you gotta kinda stick with it. Because at first yeah, first it's horrible. Like horrible, horrible. Like you don't want to do it at all. Let's see here. I'm gonna like your brain will revolt like a small child throwing a <laughs> tantrum. <laughs> I am switching over to the Optima Spear Shader. I think I'll get a better um, set of shapes that I'm looking for for the box. Yeah. And it's got a tip that I can use more. Right now it's set on a three. It's going to be a little darker, I think. And this is the Optima you're using? Yep. Ah. You can always tell because it has that teal color. Yep, it has the teal. Yeah. 
heel bone. And see this one, he, this tip hit, heated up very quickly. Um, it's thinner than the one I was using. Um, even have to bump it down. I need to get the review done on this. There's a lot of interesting specs and information that I've been learning. That I went to share. Not that it was smooth, but that was the grain's fault, not. I, I don't think I'm awake today. I'm not. You're Paul talking? just made a comment, and I'm not sure what he meant. What's annoying, Paul? I. I I don't know. <laughs> you may have to spell that out for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, chat. I'm I'm not quite up to speed today. We had to make two trips to Phoenix in the last couple of days. I mean, I had chili at the beginning of chat, so I feel all like nice and warm now. But it's not strange. Chili. It's a it's an adjective for cold, yet it's warm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> You're awake. Am I? You're awake. Am I, Valerie? <laughs> Am I? You're awake. I don't know. You just proved it. I bumped it down to, uh, I guess, about two and a half so that I can get a little lighter and work up to the darker brown. Hmm. All right, because if we do this, let's see how it goes. Remember, I always try to start in a darker area if I'm not sure how the heat's going to affect the wood. Mm. And that's why I don't get the splotches. Well, the heat's going to burn the wood, Valerie. It is going to burn the wood, but I, there's certain ways you don't want it to burn. Oh, it's about, okay, Paul said it's about the personal ceramics. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's not the first time. I had another friend, Ben, ben when we were doing uh, bowls, Ben made these huge bowls because ben, ben makes huge pottery. Yeah. But, um, but somebody uncovered them. Like stole his plastic, and somebody stole my plastic too before too. Uh, and it's like you know what? Talk to the class. Yeah. All right. So we got a I'm... bunch of blue falcons in there. That's what we got. We don't have to spell that one out. Blue falcon. Yeah, I, well, I'm sure they know what that means. It's a military term. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit darker for the pattern. So when I burn over it, oh, too dark. Sorry. You are so having your moments today. It's, a, it's one of those big, um, fluffy go. gray squirrels. That uh, Albert like, squirrel. It's like a cat. Let's see here. Kind of off. I can bring this back. So. Wow. Off, but I'm not going to stress. Yeah. I can give you some pickles. Means either. Well, I, I found out according to the internet that pickles <laughs> reduce your anxiety. According to the internet. Yeah, it must be true. Let's see here. We have some shadow <laughs> under the clasp. The lock. That in there, so don't forget about it. Ah. Okay. <laughs> what? And then I was just looking at what you got done so far, and I, I was, and I had to look at the actual reference for the box, oh. the color one, because I was like, I, I didn't, didn't understand what the thing in the corner was, but now I do. What this right here? Uh, hang on, here. I'm what? watching you on YouTube as you point at something else. Uh, this area? Yeah. Oh. Okay. I, I got it though. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just. This one is kind of messing with my head. I'm not sure how. I'm trying to stick to the fabric pattern, but... Pickles are delicious. Sorry, that was a response to chat. That wasn't a random comment. I figured. So, I know this is going to be off. I'm too close already, but I'll just make it up. I can do that because I'm the artist. That's right. 
You do what you want. Yep. Guess my base layer, so I have an idea of where I might want to go. These are a little darker, so it'll be harder to change, but I can incorporate more into it. Yeah. So, not going to stress about it. I had thought of making this a wood box and using the grain that's already here for texture and whatnot. Too late now. It is a wood box, so it's covered with fabric. It is, but I didn't want to throw people off if they're going along with the video. Ah. Uh -huh. You know? Wait a minute, the picture's wood. That's something that you can practice if you're doing this along with me. You can alter it yourself. And see where you want to go with it. Hopefully I'm on camera. Right. Like you could put like an embroidered like pickles rock on the bed or something. If you want to. <laughs> if you want to. Let's see here. So Now we have leaves up here. So what I was kind of thinking with the leaves was I was really going to use the tip of the pen to my advantage and just <laughs> almost like a paintbrush and just tapping. Mm, okay. And try, that way I've got it a little more flat so I'm not Using as much of the tip, I'm going to have to keep switching the wood around so I can get different angles. And actually, I'm really liking how this is looking. So I'm just going to throw things here and there. No, Eve, I don't think it's a specific type of pickle. I, I think just pickle. It's pickle. I don't know. Could it be the vinegar? Or is it the, the actual cucumber. pickle? Cucumber. Probably the cucumber. Mm. And, well, and the vinegar. So if you didn't have pickles, you could eat a raw cucumber and drink some some vinegar and, and then not be as stressed. <laughs> Let's see how that looks. So I'm just using different amounts of the tip. Get my shapes hmm. and I can go back and I can shade areas darker that's true um, so that if I wanted more depth in these um, marks I could get that but right now I'm just trying to get some stuff in there to make longer ones Huh. That's looking really nice. Yeah, I actually kind of like that. Yeah. And I didn't have to do a whole lot of work with that one. I was just thinking that, like, for the... if I, I was looking at them, and if you needed to do, like, paw prints, like cat cat paw prints, this would, this would <laughs> be the tool. He's paying attention now. This would be the tool to do it. Yeah. And then on the top, because of the angle, it's a little more flat. So I'm moving more side to side. Instead of up and down. Ah. And I'm just dropping things in. You can't tell what's at the top, so I'm not going to stress about it. Good for you. I'm learning. Wow, a year ago, this would have been... Trying to get every single dot Every in. single precise dot. Archaeologists that found this could go back and see exactly what the box looked like. <laughs> well, I still try, but to do that. So this shows that it's the lid and it's a different angle. Right here, we got a bit of a half circle. So that's going to be a, a more altered C. <laughs> So 
that. And again, these are going to be darker. I'm just mm. placing them. And we have some thread lines going this way. I'm just using the edge. You know, it's already reading as dimensional. That's really good. And Michael Ann says this looks really good, Belle. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Kind of making it up as I go along because I've already messed that up. But unless you point it out, nobody's going to know. Oh, Paul. Here we go a little bit more. And for this line, because it's. I can use just the very tip. It's a little darker, but it's okay. Fill that in later. And there's a line that kind of goes across, goes up. Again, I'm not perfect. I did not lay this down with every single line, and that's okay. Yes, it is. So now I can start. Grace says, you know, I agree. She says, artistic or interpretation, not mess up. Well, you said you messed up a minute ago. Oh. It's your artistic. Actually, no, I did kind of, I, I put the line in the wrong place. It wasn't. She said it's your artistic interpretation. No, not when I'm teaching. Now, if I'm trying to, talk to somebody who wants to buy the piece that may be a different story <laughs> but not when I'm trying to help it's okay now we're going to start shading it in I'm going to use I'm going to do the clasp last you see some areas it burned darker up here but where I'm trying to burn here it's lighter that's the grain some of the green takes it, takes the burn darker. Because if I go over here, even at the same angle, let's see here. Oh, this is a shadow. It's going to burn a little darker. Mm. And see, we don't have a pattern like the leaves on the side. We have thread. Highlighted. It's metallic thread, it looks like. I do want to put something though, so we're gonna. You're getting some compliments. Oh, thank you. Meg says Val makes me want to practice. I even started doing some sketching courses to up my skill level. Oh, that's awesome! Mm. And down in the description, I know Meg came in um, after I told everybody. I have a link to. Um, a channel that I'm doing a collaboration with, uh, Hilding Fine Art, Drawing Tutorials. Um, I highly recommend Hilding, Hilding's channel. And he'll be live tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. He is in Australia. So it's like the next day for her. Mm. Um, and she's working on a photo that I took and that we are doing our own interpretation type of in our own style, a medium. Hmm. Well, as Paul says, Meg, keep it up. It's all worth it. JPC it 13 art is here. Hey, JPC. Can't remember. It says, yay, I'm actually here for once. It has been a while. Let's see here. We're just missing Soup Can and Andrew Soup now. Can and Andrew. Or should I say Kurt Russell? Oh, you can't say that until he's in here. What? You can't say that until he's in. <sighs> they don't Fine. know. Well, Fine. Eve and. Well, everybody in chat knows who Soup Can is. Okay. So I'm going to have to bump this up a little bit. Guess a hair past three. Part of the box is shaded from the feather. Ah. So it's really important to get that shadow in there. Paul knows who Sheldon is. Mm -hmm. He says Sheldon is excellent. He is. She's such a sweetheart. 
on top of everything else. He's been so understanding with me in regards to this collaboration. She sent you a message a little while ago. Oh, did she? Yeah. The front of the lid is darker. Well, now Eve's asking about Kurt Russell. Well, go ahead. Now that you opened up that can of worms. All right. So if you ever watched Mark's videos and he's narrating. That's M.D. Campbell. Yeah, M.D. Campbell. Yeah. That's his username. He sounds just like Kurt Russell. In fact, I suspect that he is Kurt Russell and that it's an elaborate plot to have an anonymous art channel because if you listen to him to his voice there will be no doubt yeah close your eyes and listen to Mark as he's that's, talking in his video it's Kurt Russell that's Jack Burton Snake Plissken it's Kurt Russell I'm sorry to have to dime him out like that. But. Well, he hasn't responded to my comments, so yeah, you see exactly. Oh, cause, cause you figured he went underground. Him out. He went underground. Yeah. Yeah. Go watch his videos, and if and if and if it's true, like his videos, and then come back and like like Val's videos, for revealing the truth. Revealing the truth. Just trying to get in the shadows. Let's see here. Well, let's look at our black and white photo. Because we have a shadow here up at the top. Though it's darker at the feather than it is on the other end. Because it's, the light is more blocked there. Um, our tone of the box does need to get darker. Especially since the feather right here is lighter than the box. So, let's see, where can I touch down? Because I did up my heat. And it's done. What? Yeah, I was looking. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you talking? Oh my gosh, what happened? <laughs> the video just, you put your reference down and, and it looked complete. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> it was God, done. Silly. It was a really good job, though. Oh, it's not done anymore. No, it's not done anymore. See, this part of the wood wants to shade a different color. Let's try to even that out a bit. Need to make the feather pop out. So this is going to have to be darker. I've kind of gone a little closer to the edge than I should have. That's okay. I'm not worried about the high highlights because I can put that in with the color pencil. This darker too. Stand it out and try to hide the graphite. I'm burning over it to. I think it's hiding it pretty good. I, I don't see it. So. This part of the feather is still lighter. Now, the last video for this series is going to be next week's live, and that's going to be putting in last minute details and the shadowing of the background and then I'm going to call it done. Let's see here. Blend out the shadow a bit. Probably I'm not going to finish the box in this slide. I'll finish it in the video. I think I can go too much more for today. Just one of those days, guys. But we're close. Being done with the whole thing. I definitely need to get some texture behind the feathers here mm -hmm. so that they stand out as lighter. Michael asking, are you going to darken up the box or leave it light? 
<sighs> I do need to darken it because it's compared to the book and everything around it. I think it's just way too dark. It blends more into the background than it does balancing out the composition. So yeah. it will be darker. Okay. In fact, I need to, and I need to straighten the line of the box right here. It's going to have to go up a little bit. I just saw that. Because it's off. If I put the... Okay, you can see. If I put the piece of glass... That's how much my angle is off. So, the easiest fix is to bring the line up at the bottom versus trying to sand this area out. And I shouldn't have to go too far up on this angle. But again, that has to be okay. Mm -hmm. It's already burned really dark and I hadn't thought of the piece of glass for a straight edge until after. So I'm just going to go over the whole thing, trying to darken. And see, even this tip is kind of squeaking on the wood, so it's the wood. Mm -hmm. Because this is a polished tip. The good thing is that I'm not getting any of the buzzing from the tip. Mm. Yeah, I don't hear anything. Because the front face has less light hitting it, we need to make that darker. And there is a bit of a highlight under the lip. In fact, I need to right about there. Get my reference away so I don't have to and I try to lightly put this line because there is a bit of highlight in between. That light just enough where I can see it, which I can't. <laughs> Down a little bit more. Oh, got that too dark. Okay. So whatever darkness this turns out to be when I move it, that's how dark, dark the box is going to be in that area. Mm. Like, other than the edge, it doesn't look like it's going to get too dark. How well can any, can anybody see? I yeah, can't even it. really see where I did it. Um, I can see. That's pretty clear. It's gonna be a matter of darkening things up. I'm gonna kind of fudge the details of the class because Michael Ann loves the idea of using the glass for a straight edge. It really does help. I'm really liking it. It's easier to line up. Um, with a ruler, you can't see what's on the other side, and if you're straight enough, and where you want to be. What did? How did you come up with that? Um. Well, back when I was thinking about the torch and masking, I knew that I could use glass um, because it doesn't. It mm -hmm. takes a lot of heat. And as I was working on, in fact, the book, um, and needing a straight edge. Looked around and I was like, oh, wait a minute, I got a mirror. So I tried the mirror first. And again, I still had the problem of not being able to see. And so I, I remember that there was already cut glass and picture frames. Mm. So I had to give that a try. And that way I can see my lines on both sides make think make sure things are a little more even this line's not perfectly straight because i was trying to hide the other line yeah well it really is a good idea and then like for burners it's like if you normally it's like if you accidentally you know 
break a picture frame or you know something it's like oh no but that's just an opportunity to get all kinds of different angles yeah sure is the thing that I do suggest even if you pull it out of the picture frame and it's already the cut edge is sand the edge I, um, because it won't be it might feel smooth to your fingers but it won't be smooth to the tip and so I sanded with 600 wet dry sandpaper uh, straight up and down on the edge so per perpendicular to the um, sandpaper and then went to 800 huh. let's see here this is actually lighter here on the edge so have to be darker and this is just going to be a matter of a balancing it, going back and forth, darkening areas, trying to blend out and hide the pencil mark. Let's see here. Because right here, it's lighter, so you can see the pencil mark more. Doing this, I'm going to have to darken the shadow so the shadow is still darker, and that's the balancing act just going back and forth between the areas. That's, that's what art is, it's Let's just a big here. balancing act back and forth. This edge is the other edge, and I just went way too dark there, so that means. Gives you an idea of how dark the rest of the box is going to be now. Yeah. I went too dark there. That was probably off screen, too. Um, so areas of the darker red fabric is going to look like that. Mm. Okay. I don't have a choice anymore. <laughs> I just went too dark there. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, shadow line though, does need to be darker. It's one of the darkest areas on the box. So. The line lines for the box weren't completely straight because of the fabric over that's overlapping it. Mm. So corners weren't uh, were a little more splayed and. So again, yeah, it still needs to go darker. Well, it's an old box too, and it's been around. It's oh, I touched down to the blob. I think in uh, places it's even probably a little warped. It is. It's warped. It's the fabric is wearing off. Yeah. And I used it a blob, but now I have to try to cover. Blend because it was such a big one. It's not like the, because if we look at the, this is a brightened up reference photo. <sighs> oh, okay. Yeah, the photo itself is a little darker. Um, this I brightened up so I could see where my lines were. So maybe this makes a little bit more sense yeah. to that. Well, Meg is asking, when you finish a piece, do you cover it with anything? I, because there'll be, um, all my pieces, yes, are sealed. Um, I'm switching pins. Okay. Um, this one will have a, a coat or two, a spray sealant on it. To trap in the white colored pencil highlights. I'm switching over the coal wood. And then I will brush on a couple, and I'll probably spray in order to lock in the bark that's mm. along the edges. Yeah. And then I will, ooh, that's darker, do a couple layers of clear coat, sanding in between with um, very fine sandpaper. Right. Michael Ann says the glass bottle looks awesome. 
Thank you. It definitely, I think, still needs its highlights. Actually, she says the whole thing looks awesome, actually. Let's see here. So I've already got my marks for where I kind of went from fabric lines pattern. So I'm just going to go over it. This is the cold wood um, flat round cuter. I do like how it's a little more even on the wood. With less heat, well, yeah, I'm just shy of two. Just over two. But I can go up on the edge of it, hopefully on the screen, and get a darker burn. It's not going to be straight. And to be honest, I think it looks a little more interesting, not straight. I agree. Yeah, a little more. Gives it more character. In my opinion. That looks alright. Mm -hmm. With it not being... Because my square is off, but I will fix this line. I'm going to have to in order to get the yeah, I think perspective it's fine. right. I think it's fine. Let's see here. Because I had the pin lifted off, um, I didn't want another blob, so I touched down in the shadow of the sketchbook, and then quickly brought it up. I think that's the easiest way to keep things even. See, I know that's a shadow there. I may have to um, get rid of some of this pattern because it's just not burning smoothly. Or go back over it. What I'll do. Go back yeah. over it. Because it's getting too blocky when it shouldn't be. This is burning along with the grain and it circles. Paul asks, does the seal stay on the piece all the time or does it get to go for a swim sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> In that case, it likes to stay with the box, with the wood. And Meg is asking an actual question, <laughs> Paul. If I'm creating ornaments as gifts, mm -hmm. just simple pieces, do I need to seal them? I would, if you want them to, because you figure once they're done hanging on the tree and they're put away for the rest of the year, the boxes get moved and banged around and in sealing it and it just helps protect your art and hopefully it'll make it last longer so i would seal it yeah and wood does wear if it's not sealed in some way even if it's just you know one or two coats it will age of course as it gets older and if you want it to look closer how it was when you first created it, you're going to need to seal it. Ah. Well, Eve, Eve is playing the role of, of Paul's mom again. Because <laughs> she's like, pop! Pop! She made two. So yeah, anytime, anytime you're giving a gift or selling a piece, regardless of size, I would always seal it. Because you don't know... Whoop, too dark. Oh well. You don't know the conditions that your piece will be in and how it's being treated and stored. And um, I think some people in general, no, nobody in particular, but I think some people think wood is hard and it can take a lot of abuse and because obvious I'm burning it. But if it's not taken care of, your art is not going to last. That's true. And sealing it, I think, is just just ensures that your artwork sticks around for a long time. That is very true. And if you're giving it as a gift and, and or selling, the person who receives it expects it to last. 
little extra insurance too because mm-hmm. if somebody spills something on it and uh, and uh, it doesn't soak into the grain. Yeah. Like if somebody spilled Kool Aid on a an unsealed uh, piece, I mean, yeah. it'd be done. It's, yeah, it's now the color of the Kool Aid and or spaghetti sauce. Who who's eating next to my pieces that I have to worry about spaghetti sauce getting on one of my pieces? Ah. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> I'm eating every every live show. I ate chili today. Uh, uh, this is gonna have to keep darkening up. But I think that's where I'm going to stop it for now. It is still. I think the box is still a little too light, oh. but we will get there. And here I thought I went a little too dark on the shadow, but now that I've righted the piece so it's the direction it should be and kind of pushed myself back a little bit, it looks, it looks right. It looks like the pen yeah. is... Yeah. Okay. I know my line is still off here and here. And I will fix it the best I can. I do need to fix a bit of the line on the top of the wood. Let me see how far off I am. Bottom. didn't you know <laughs> so it's a little bit off and it comes right, actually right to the base of where I use the flower the uh, tip as a flower, flower petal so that's okay hmm. um, I do think the clasp is going to be off so I'm going to have to alter that a bit because it's equal or even to the box lid. Mm. Just in perspective. Actually, it's not too bad off. I definitely like the piece of glass to, to do it as a straight line. So, do we have any more questions? I'll put this. Right. Here we go. Get you guys a better angle. Kind oh, of trying nice. to. Without. It, the box does need to be darker, and I'll put the clasp in, and there'll be a speed burning update of that. Alright, turn my burner off before I burn anything. Ha! What? No, it just reminded me. I had a dream last night. I just remembered this. I didn't burn the house down. No, it was wood burning. <laughs> and I burnt myself. <laughs> so even in your dreams, you're not safe. Yes. Oh my gosh. I don't know what to say to that. Even in... Okay, I was going to teach you how to burn and do a video on that, but if you can't even safely burn in your dreams... I'm sorry. <laughs> so, there we go. Almost done. Almost, Almost done. done. It's looking good. Yeah, it's not too bad. I know, it's, I know things are off, but... Chat agrees. Chat says it's looking good. Oh, thank you. So, don't think we have any more questions. Thank you, Michael Ann. I'm glad you're loving it. I was going for a romantic Edgar Allan Poe type feel for this one. And I think once we get the background shadow and the high highlights, it's really going to pop. Well, I hear, I I hear like, like, um, when I see it, I hear, like, violin music in the background. So, like, <laughs> masterpiece theater, you know? So, I, th- I think that you're achieving it. Oh, good. Well, as long as you hear something that's not bad, I think we're all okay. Okay. Don't let him use the stove. <laughs> Michael and I gotta let him use the stove. He helps cook dinner. You all the time. Uh, yeah, on my not so good days, he has dinner duty, so <laughs> or we don't eat. So that just has to, yeah. 
I have had to turn it off behind you a couple of times, though. I made pizza last night. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you so much. And don't forget to hit like on the video and leave a comment. And welcome to all our new subscribers. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that like that subscribe button. And I'm all flustered at this point. I don't know why. Because I got tongue twisted. And anyway, guys, happy burning. Bye.